Hello, everyone. How in the world is everyone doing this evening? Welcome, <clears throat> pardon me, to another edition of Music and Mixing. I'm DJ Michael Joseph, and I do this live show about once a month. And most of the time, it's with the with the decks back there, and we do mixing. But tonight is another studio edition because of something I posted a while back. Uh, we got kind of a, a good feedback on the fact of, of some hard drive discussion that I had on my on my Facebook and Twitter and all that. I'm going to adjust my color here a bit while we're talking. Um, so with I got a little bit of uh, 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 positive feedback from that, so I decided to just do a show and talk about a little bit about it and and all the things that go along with that. Hit save here. Uh, if you've ever watched the show before, we always start out. And I usually talk to some people in the chat, do some shout-outs from wherever people are. Hey, DJ so-and-so, I'm from such-and-such. <clears throat> then at about five minutes after the top of the hour, once everybody gets into the chat and we start the topic, um, tonight, uh, I'm going to cover everything on the topic about how to back up, different ways to back up your data, your DJ data, all that kind of stuff. Um, I I'm going to talk about it in length, a bunch of different things, stuff you may already do, stuff you may think about. Um, but I'm going to go why I do the things I do, and then I can take questions afterwards, or we can change the subject and talk about anything you want. <clears throat> so anyways, I'm going to start in the chat for the first couple of minutes. I want to say hello to Todd. What's going on, Todd? Haven't talked to you in a while. Uh, Howie, what's going on, Howie? Uh, Chris Simpson is in the chat. Uh, uh, Geek Hey, the DJ. I always, I always have to stop and read that before I say it because I never get it out right. And Randy from Sound of Sessions, DJ. How is everybody doing? Um, I saw that we had two thumbs up before we even started. We have 15 people watching. Uh, if I'm able to, I do have the ability to watch all the chat on. if you're watching us on one of the Facebook pages. I think we're on three or four Facebook pages and a couple other places. where When we do the broadcast, we do it to a bunch of places all at once and not just YouTube. Um, but that's the main place I kind of watch the chat. But I do have the other chat open tonight so that I can see people if you post anything from any of the Facebook pages or anything like that. Uh, just like Chris... Uh, I, I, I I'm not gonna try to pronounce that. Chris gave me three ha three three high fives. So, back. To, I can't, I'm so sorry that I'm horrible with names, um, uh, pronunciations of stuff like that. <clears throat> Let me move some stuff around here so I can get back to this a little bit better. Um, just making sure we're doing good tonight. Uh, like I said, this would be an interesting topic. It's it's some of it's my opinion because I've had some people say some things that they kind of disagree with. And I'm going to, uh, uh, again, talk about why I do it, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm just watching the chat. For those of you wondering why I'm saying, um, I'm just watching the chat right now. We're just checking out some things. So we, like I said, if, you, if you're watching this on demand, also, uh, you can fast forward about five, you know, five minutes into it is when I usually start. Once everybody gets in there, into the chat, uh, then I'll start. So if you're watching this on demand, uh, you know, just don't cut me out. It's not, the whole show is not like this. I usually do a shout out at the beginning, let people come into the chat, and then we start the show at, at about five after. So we got about another minute or so. So we're going back to the chat to give a shout out to Jimmy. What's going on, Jimmy? Um, uh, Jose's in there. Uh, I already said hello to Chris. Sorry if I'm repeating things here, making sure I get everybody in there. We've got 21 people watching on here. I don't know how many you have watching on the other ones. Uh, I haven't opened those up yet, so I think we have 34. Yeah, we have 34 watching outside, so that's good. So it's five after now, <clears throat> so I'm going to start. All right. Um, uh, feel free to drop questions in the chat as we go along. I might not see them right away. The stuff I'm going to talk about is going to be really quick. I'll get through it quick, and then we can answer questions, or I'll try to stop between each section and kind of uh, uh, answer the questions as we go along like that if I can. I'm going to be covering a broad range of things that have to do with backing up your DJ data and why it's important. Um, you may think in this day of digital everything that every DJ backs up all the time, but I literally know guys, and I've also had people in the, 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 the uh, um, comment section of that picture that I'm about to show, and I talked about what started all this, uh, made comments that they know people who just had something crash and they had no backup. <clears throat> and we're going to even talk more about just having a backup, but we're going to have talk about having an efficient backup because that's what, when I do my backups, that's the purpose of what I'm doing is how quick can I get back up and running. And you'll see kind of why I do some things that I do and why I'm so ridiculously overboard. 
So it all started out um, that I wanted to update my DJ laptop, which really didn't need to be updated because it's ridiculously fast. But I have to spend some money for the business to get some write-offs because I just don't didn't have a whole lot of write-offs last year, and I kind of got hammered on taxes. So I'm gonna s- trying to s- spend a little bit as the year goes on and different things. Um, if anybody follows me on the story modes of Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, you saw a picture I just posted about an hour ago. Uh, like I said, if you follow me on a story mode, you're going to get a lot more than you're going to get on the posts or, or the videos or anywhere else. Uh, the story mode got first. You'll see something that for a video that's coming next week. If you don't follow me on story mode, you have to wait till at least tomorrow to see it. Uh, but it, again, it was another expenditure in my business to, you know, like I said, just trying to get some write-offs and different things. And it's something that I wanted to do. And I'll talk about in the video next week when you see the video why I did that. But this all started with an upgrade. And I want to share here. Um, I, I, in my computer... It has two internal hard drives. Now, I have a Lenovo uh, IdeaPad Y700, which is basically a gaming computer. <clears throat> and I got it because uh, it had its own board video card, and it was very powerful. And I've had it for about three years now. Um, it's my second Lenovo I've had. The last one lasted me, what, eight or nine years before the video card went. Um, and that one, I, that one, I can't believe it went. I think it was like seven years. I can't believe it went that long because it was an early version of an i7, and that thing ran so freaking hot. It was terrible. Uh, it was just wasn't built right, and it wasn't built to last. This one runs much cooler and much better. But it, it this one has basically two hard drives on it. And one of the hard drives, uh, this is the slim drive right here. That's the one that it came with, and it's a regular hard disk drive. And then it also has what's called, um, oops, also has what's called uh, an uh, um, uh, NVMe or an M2, M2, M.2 style drive, <clears throat> and this is this is came from the factory. And this uh, on this, it's a re- for those who don't know what it is, it's a really 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 fast uh, SSD drive, and it's built different than the ones you see. It looks like that. Some computers have the slots that can take that and different things like that. Um, mine has that, and in my computer, the DJ computer, the operating system and the software is held in this. And the uh, the 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 music is held in this right here in the, in the the DJ computer, the old one. But what I wanted to do was to take this HDD and put a solid state drive in. So I ended up purchasing a solid state drive, and then uh, copied over all my stuff, and then put that in. And that's what kind of started all this was that it was just the fact that I wanted to do an upgrade, and then when you're doing upgrades, you got to do backups or transfers or all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so I started posting pictures about some of the stuff that I did, and that's where a lot of this started. Um, let me get back to here. Um, so I've ended up posting a, this picture for if those who maybe, don't, again, don't follow me. Feel free to follow me. on. I'm, I'm on all the social medias. Uh, I post the same to all, so if you're only a Twitter person or only an Instagram person, you'll get basically the same thing. Uh, uh, Instagram doesn't get as many posts as the rest, but I, I do heavily post in the story mode. So you can follow that and see all the things. But uh, the, this was the post that I posted. It was, it was the three hard drives, and it says, don't forget to back up your backups backup. But that was actually a lie because that wasn't what that was. What that was was that was my backups backups backup so i had to go three backups to explain what i was doing here and now i'm basically going to tell you uh what i did and why i did it um but i do a little bit more and i'm going to explain more about the different things i do both on the dj computer and a studio computer again to show everything that i do so that you know understand what my backup and why i do it because it's not just having a backup it's having an efficient backup and that's that's the key there um, I'm going to keep checking the chat and see if there's anything in there. If I missed anybody that came in, I want to say hello to them later. Uh, Dave, I don't know if I said hello to you or not, or Chris or everyone. Um, but I'm going to keep moving on here. Um, basically, in the studio computer, and this is something I've been doing for years, and again, it's a business write-off, is that I have the Google Drive. And I, ha- I pay $9.99 a month, and I get 2 terabytes of online storage. And what it does is I have it hooked to the studio computer. So any work that I do on my studio computer, the one that I'm broadcasting from right now, Anything I do, if I change a document, edit a picture, edit a video, anything, it's constantly backed up. So literally my computer could just go boom, crash. I would have all my data. And that's one of the reasons why I do that. That's why I pay it. Again, it's a business write-off. So keep in mind that it's not just spending money for spending money. It's a business write-off. And it gets me full backup. So like anything happens, 
I got the full backup. And that also works with the phone because I run Android, so all my pictures are always backed up, everything. In that sense, there is a continual backup. But I don't use that to back up my DJ songs and files because it takes a long time to get those fi- to download those files. So if my computer would crash and I need those files, it would take forever to bring them down. So that's why I do the actual physical copies that I hold in my hand. So I know some other people are talking about using backup uh, uh, software, backup services, different things like that. There's no problem with that. But again, I'm talking about being efficient. So in my mind, if my computer goes down today, like if 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I can run to Best Buy, get a computer, load the software, put my stuff on there you know, from the hard drive or just use external for that night. <clears throat> and that night, I'm making a paycheck. And that's the purpose because I'm out three or four times a week. So the longest I can go without a DJ computer would be three or four days maximum because, uh, like I said, I'm DJing so much. So the purpose of everything I'm doing around here is showing the efficiency of it. But again, I want to show the importance of the backup, like the drives, the Google Drive, and the other services that you can pay for, the carbon and all that stuff, uh, because it's really, really good because any hard drives die all the time. And to be able to get stuff that you, you know, not lose anything, that's super important. So that's a purpose that it's there. But again, I don't use it as my full backup for DJing for the simple purpose of how long it would take. No other reason, but it just takes a little extra time. Um, so beyond that, as you saw in the picture, I'm going to go back to the picture there. Um, all right, so those are the three drives, and I have them here, and I'm going to show them to you in a minute. Um, <clears throat> but the one on uh, right here, that's I call that backup number one. So backup number one. Um, is just a, a regular hard disk drive, nothing special. Okay, and this backup number one has um, drag and drop copies of all my music and videos and all that kind of stuff. Drag and drop all of the stuff from Virtual DJ's files, which I'll show you in a second what those are and where to find those and other ways to copy it. But this is copy number one. Okay, I'm going to take a step back. It's actually not copy number one, but it is copy number one because there's a rogue copy that goes to the studio computer. So I have an extra drive in my studio computer that all my DJ stuff goes into. And that's the only thing it holds is my DJ stuff. So if I'm doing work on the computer here and need you know a show where I need to show you stuff with virtual, I now have an identical copy of my DJ laptop on the studio computer that if I open virtual, everything is identical. Songs, play counts, all that kind of stuff. So that's a backup copy that's not necessarily a backup copy, but it's here. So if worst case scenario, it's there, but this is this is the first step of the first backup. Um, now I want I want to stop here a second, and I want to show you something that for those of you who use virtual, you know I use that. Serato does its own backup system, uh, but I want to show something with um, with virtual that I don't know if many people know this. Um, you go left screen is that they have if you go to the, their website, they have programs that you can use that will back up all the virtual files and I'll show you them in a second what they are and these programs uh, one here is for Windows only one's for Mac only and this one is for both I've tried them um, they're good this one here if I'm correct I'm not I obviously I don't run Mac so I can't try the Mac but this one does a thing uh, that to where let's say you know you have let's I'm just gonna use a number 100 music files in your thing and you go to do a backup and you have since the backup have added one song it's not going to go in and back up all 101 songs. That program, its efficiency is going to go in. It is going to look at what's there and only back up what's different. So if you change a file, add a file, take a file away, it's not going to take as long because as, as I do with this, where I do a full drag and drop. That one looks at things that are different and makes the copy. It's, it's a setting. You can do it either way. It's a setting in there to only do what's different. I myself, just for my own sake of mind, like to just do a full as is. So everything gets copied in here. And I want to show you a list of things that get copied in here. Um, where's that at? Where's that at? I lost my file here. There we go. Okay, now we're going to go left screen. All right, so if you go into virtual and into your computer, into documents, uh, you're going to see a virtual folder. This is not where your music is. This is a virtual folder that's under your library, under the, the C drive. And if you open it, I'm going to zoom in here. 
um, if you open it, that's where you're going to see your virtual files. And these are the ones that you want to copy. They're everything from uh, your history play, your maps, uh, different plugins that you've added, samplers, skins, the tools, the different things you've added. All of that is in here. And this is what you want to copy over. There's programs from virtual. They do copy all these over. Or you can drag and drop. So in mine, I'm copying all of the music files and that entire file right there all the way over so that I have a copy of that. Um, and that's that's what's on here. And that's copy number one. And that's why I do this. Now, copy number two is absolutely 100% identical to copy one. Identical. This purpose is that I give it to a DJ friend to keep at his house so that if my house ever burnt down and I lost everything, hard drives, computer, everything, all I would have to do, again, it's about efficiency, go buy a laptop, go to his house, pick this up, and I'm ready to go. And that's the purpose. So it's off-site. So if anything happens, now again, you can use a download service or, or, or a backup service online to do the exact same thing. But my purpose is, is that I could go pick up a laptop and literally plug this into the laptop with the wire and DJ off of that right now as if it, nothing had happened. I would want, obviously, to transfer the stuff, but that's the purpose of this. I keep it off-site so that whatever happens, um, I can just go grab it and do it. So that's why that's there. And the final one is a little bit different because it, it, it is something that I, I've been doing for a while, <clears throat> and I do it on the studio computer, and I do it on this one. And it's, a, it's again, to speed up the process of coming back up to life. So if my DJ computer for some reason screwed up and I had to wipe both that uh, NVMe drive and the other SSD and start from scratch. I have a clone of both of them on this and this is just the other drive that this is the drive that came out of the laptop that I told you this is an HD drive and you can use any drive you want and this is a little uh, a SATA cable is all that is add to that and this is using a software uh, called and it's a really dumb name <laughs> of software um, Aomi Backer Upper is what it's called. And you can use a free version or you can get the pro version. Uh, there's different levels to it. I did all this with the free version. And what it does is there's different ways that it can back up, the program can. But what I use it for is that with this software, what I do is I do an exact clone image, clone image of both C and D drives on the DJ laptop. So if I would start from two blank drives that were messed up. Not talking about buying a new computer. I'm talking about if I had to swipe everything off of there, all I had to do is plug this back in and use the AOME software and put both C and D drive fully imaged, including operating system and everything, back on. I would power up the computer and I would be exactly where I was before. So that's why I do the third one. So it's a copy. A backup copy kept offline, and an image, full image of everything. And those are the three that I run. Like I said, besides the one I keep on my computer, and that's just for work. So stuff gets thrown over there, and it gets overwritten all the time because, like I said, what happens on the DJ computer comes over to this one just so that I have it there. And that's the reason I do all of them. And like I said, it wasn't a long show tonight that we're going to, you know, I had enough stuff to say. I can answer questions and talk about uh, the details and all the different things, if, if you want to talk about changing out the drives, all that kind of stuff. But that's basically why I do the three. I do the exact copy. I do the off-site so that if something were to happen here at the house, the house burnt down or whatever, or I got robbed and I lost all the drives and all the computers, I still would have everything I need to go make money. And that's the purpose. And the third one is just a fast, quick way to get stuff back up if you know we've all had computers kind of die on us and we have had to, to 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 redo and this lets you redo back to exactly where you were quickly so that's the backups that's why i did what i did um, i'm going to go back into the uh chat room now and watch some answer some uh questions so if you have any questions um hit me up let me see who else has came into the chat here um Someone there is talking about doing the cloud. Um, someone in there. I'm looking at some 
chats that people are talking about, virtual DJ and stuff like that on out there. Um, there's, like I said, there's different programs out there. People are talking about uh, the different things, virtual DJ, the way it backs up. Um, again, those are the files where everything's at. So everything you're going to have there, like because I do custom MIDI mapping, so all my custom MIDI mapping is in there, including the keyboard custom MIDI mapping, because I don't only do it for the controller, I do it for the keyboard, and all of that is in that area. And it's just easy. Like I said, my way is just to drag and drop. There's no wrong way. If you chose to go a different way, um, there's nothing wrong with that. It, it's all good for whatever. Um, keep in mind that if you're doing the backup copy like I do, and I have a C and D drive, they have to be the same letter, or you have to go again onto virtual site, get a little download thing that will let you change the drive letters on all your information. So it's easy for me because I have a C and D drive in the studio computer and a C and D drive in, in that. And I can just put everything that was on the C drive on the C drive, everything that's on the D drive is on the D drive. But if you have a D drive and you throw the next one in that's an E, and you want to then uh, make everything that in your file system says D drive and you need it to reach to read as E, there is a, an add-on for virtual that you can do that that can switch all your data stuff from saying D to now saying E. Um, I've not used it, but I do know that people have and they say it works. Um, we go back here. Chris asks, uh, when you do the backup for the virtual DJ, uh, the only drive folders I need to worry about, he's asking me, are the only ones I need to worry about the ones in the documents. Um, there's another one that I always copy over. I don't know the whole detail what it covers. It's on the C drive. It takes up virtually no space, um, but I always copy it over too. So it's two different folders. Uh, both say virtual DJ. And I see online that we are freezing a lot so i apologize about that i don't know if it's freezing on your end or just my end but i apologize but like i said it, it's i know i kind of go some extra steps that are not necessary but like i said i know people have had their computer stolen i know people have lost it broke it i don't like i said i don't want to lose a night of djing over something that i can easily take care of myself and that's that's again that's the purpose of all that so let me go back to the other chat and see what I can find some other things here in the chat. We have some people on Facebook. Thank you guys on Facebook for watching. I'm trying to watch both the Facebook comments and the uh, YouTube comments. We have a chat room, live chat room going on on the YouTube. So if you go to uh, youtube.com forward slash disc jockey news, uh, the video is there live. You can join us in on the live chat if you want. But I am, I am seeing the stuff people are posting on Facebook, and I will try to answer those questions too. Um, let me see here. See what all we got going in here. Yeah, a lot of DJs use external hard drives as their DJ drive. Uh, the Lacey drive is one, or Lace drive, however you pronounce it. I pronounce it Lacey drive. It's an incredibly durable hard drive that a lot of people use. And a lot of DJs use externals for the purpose that if they go over to their friend's computer, they can plug their external in and DJ with their friend. <clears throat> I usually don't do that because, I, like I said, I, mine has, this is my second computer with dual internals, and I absolutely love it. I don't have to carry an extra drive. <clears throat> pardon me. I don't have to carry an extra drive around. Um, uh, everything's in my computer, and I don't really worry about it because I don't DJ with other people all that often. you know. And if I do, I can plug my computer in because a lot of the – controllers and mixers now have dual um, USB so it's easy to plug in um, people are talking about buying the SSDs they're cheaper <clears throat> I bought the one for the studio computer and they're both the fast um, Samsung drives I got it for 130 for a terabyte and then the one that I threw in uh, the DJ computer um, it's it's the Evo and I, what's the other one the Evo and the do I still have the box over here Oh, they're both Evos, just different number Evos. And this was the, the one I put in the studio computer is the Evo uh, 860. And I paid $90 for this. So I got a terabyte for 90 and the other one, like I said, I think the other one's a little faster. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Um, I don't remember the number. There are two different numbers on the Evos. And there's also another one that's not Evo. It's something else. Um, but what, what that is, is, is I don't even want to go into details about how it writes and, 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 and how, many char how many characters it can write at a time. I don't want to go into that because I, I don't know the details. I've only kind of like looked into it. Um, but uh, that's what it is. So it isn't a lot of money you're spending on those things. Uh, like I said, 90 bucks is what I spent for the one in there. 
Uh, I'm also thinking about putting some RAM in the, there, even though I don't need the RAM because I, after I put the, the the second solid state in, I did I ran it on really really heavy and did a RAM test, and I'm only using about 55% of the RAM under heavy load. So I'm debating whether I want to put more RAM in, you know, because part of it is, like I said, it's a business write-off. So I need to get some write-offs before the end of the year. So I'm considering maybe putting RAM in it, even though I don't need it. You know, even the video card itself on as as a a, a um, um, I just blanked on it. Um, NVIDIA video card on the laptop, and it has four gig of RAM just for that video on just that card, not not the other one there too. So I'm going to go back to the chat and see what I can do here. Somebody asked me, how do you do a monthly backup autom automatically versus Time Machine or Time Machine is the best route? Now, if I'm correct on that, please let me know. Time Machine, is Time Machine a Mac only? I think it is. Like I said, I don't spend a lot of time in the Mac world. Um, yeah, it's an OS thing. Um, I, I, I honestly can't tell you how uh, OS, how that works with that. Um It, it, it's it's there's still backup systems like I said and there's stuff like carbon and different things like that you can use um, th when I do the drive the drive just I, I assign what folders I want the drive to back up and it just backs up so if I change something change a picture drag drop um, thank you for for letting me both guys let me know about it being Mac only um, um, I have I've you know in the DJ world you have just so many friends that use Mac I, you know I'm there but I don't I don't use it so I don't know everything about the Mac side of things and somebody was asking me something the other day about that and I couldn't quite answer them on that. But um, like I said, the drive that I use, uh, it's just basically it's taking files and putting them there. It's not a full like the Carbon and the Time Machine, which do an operating system level backup. The, the Google Drive is just backing up files. It's not doing an operating system. So if you have those two, the Time Machine or like the Carbon, it's going to be able to redo your operating system and everything, kind of like my Ghost Drive or clone, whichever word. <laughs> Depending on how old you are, you're going to be calling it cloning or or um, uh, ghosting, whichever. I'm an old school, so I always said ghost, and then I started working with some younger guys, and they're like, what? So there, it's just how you do that. The, the, doing the time machine and the carbon is, is always up to date. Mine's going to be a month. You know, depending on how long I, in between my backups that I do. Like I said, is when I'm working in the computer here. It could be a Tuesday afternoon. Set up the computer, plug in the drive, run it through its thing, and a couple hours later, I shut it all down and, and I'm done. Um, but the importance of, like I said, why I did this show is because I got a lot of response, both on Facebook and Instagram, people talking about both. Yes, I did this recently. Or I thank you for reminding me. I've been wanting to do that for a couple of weeks. Or someone else chiming in, going. My friend just lost all of his stuff. He didn't back it up. And it's to encourage you to take the time while you're binge watching a TV show. Set your DJ computer up, back it up, because it's what makes your money. So think about it like if you were um, a carpenter and you left all your tools out in the rain and never did anything with them, never fixed them, never updated them you're not going to be as good at what you do. And, and again, why I do this is because if something crashes, like if I DJ Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and my computer crashes on Friday or Thursday, um, I don't want to go a whole week without it. I'm going to go up Friday morning, grab another laptop somewhere, uh, plug in my drive, load it, and Friday night I'm going to be making money. And that's the purpose behind all of that. Um, how frequently do you update these drives? Minimum. Um, Joe, that's an awesome question. Minimum. And, and I know a lot of people are going to shake their finger at me for taking so long, but I do minimum four times a year. And I know a lot of people are going, that's way too, too long in between. Um, I do them more often, but minimum four times a year, absolute minimum four times a year. Um, I don't download, like there are people out there who belong to uh, music services to where they just get piles and piles and piles and piles of songs um, I don't. I download each week. So I go and I'll look for what's new that I don't have, download maybe a couple different versions, and that's it for the week. I don't, I don't mess with this. Here's a whole spew of music. So when I, if mine goes down in four months, let's say four months, I'm not losing that many songs, you know, for a couple of weeks, you know. 
and it's stuff that I can go back and grab or stuff depending on what music service you have, you can put it into your crate. Uh, BPM Supreme and Club Killers have the crates. So you could go put them into the crates on their website, and if something dies, you can go back and look what you have downloaded It's because it's going to be there, and, and it will let you move that crate, whatever you made it, on their website back onto your computer as is. Um, Joe on Facebook says he does it every Sunday. That's freaking awesome. Uh, I wish I had that kind of um, dedication because when you do that every week, you never worried. There's no panic mode in in, in, in in that. You just know if something goes, you just fire it back up on something else, and you're good to go. And that's the, that's the cool thing about that. Um, uh, again, we're back to the cloning. He's talking a little bit about cloning in there. Rez is talking about. Um, I, I, I don't. My cloning of it is just a backup in case. It's not it's it's not something that I'm going to rely on, but I just like to have it um, just so that I have a copy of it, and and, and it's just nice to have that. Um, yeah, there's a difference between cloud play and the stuff I'm talking in, in doing the online backups. Um, Virtual does that. Serato does that. Recordbox does that. Um, I'm guessing Tractor does that. It's been so long since I've used Tractor, um, but there's a difference between that. Uh, cloud services and and doing where, like I said, that if you look at your crates on, on one of those other services, and there's zillions of services that do the way I'm talking about, uh, you can just go see what you've downloaded. As long as you put it in there, it goes in each time you download. It keeps a record of it, so you can go back and grab that. And again, I I, I have a lot of old friends uh, in the DJ business. Where, you know, we talk about the days where we had to go to record stores and dig and dig and dig for stuff, and and, and hours and hours and hours come out later with like three records. You know, but with the the um, with with the modern day digital, uh, you get music as you want it, as you need it. Doesn't take any time, and it also same doesn't take the time to to back them up. You know, so we got a lot of people on Facebook tonight. Thank you guys for tuning to Facebook. We are streaming on quite a few different places tonight. Um, I'm going to try to hit some questions here and just see where everybody's at. Um, right now, I'm going to go do a quick commercial. Uh, we're going to hit some of our sponsors because we have a lot of sponsors that help out the show, and we are so thankful for them. Uh, all the links are in the show notes below, so please take some time. Go down and look at the sponsors that we have. Click on the links. Go to the websites. Maybe purchase something. Let them know that you were here visiting us. And I will be right back after this commercial. <music> Tonight's DJ and TV show is sponsored in part by Electro Voice, DJ Event Planner, ADJ, NLFX Professional, Promo Only, and DJ and TV Insiders. And we want to thank our sponsors again for being a part of this. Uh, we got a lot of cool stuff coming up. For those of you who don't know, uh, Disc Jockey News is going to be part of the Photo Booth Expo and stuff going on forward with uh, Mobile Beat and different things like that. But this year in February 2020, uh, I'm going to be in Las Vegas with a bunch of other people doing presentations in the DJ world education-wise. I'm going to be doing mixing and virtual qu uh, class on both, talking about both. I'm uh, going to be doing some uh, DJing demos, showing different things out like that. So if you are going to be in Vegas or you want to go to the Photo Booth Expo, uh, there's links below that show you how to get tickets for the Photo Booth Expo if you want to go. And I believe you can still get somewhat of a discount. I know we had a discount that ran until November, and I don't know about after that how that really went to after that. But if you're going to be there, check it out, and I will be able to talk to you there, answer questions, both about mixing or anything else. Uh, like I said, if you've ever watched the show before, you know sometimes I have the deck set up, and I show mixing things because that's what music and mixing was about. I mainly wanted the show to be about the mix DJ, people who actually mix and get out and work the turntables, work the, the, the CDJs, work the controllers, whatever it is where they're mixing, and that's kind of what the show is about. <clears throat> but <clears throat> from time to time, like tonight, we do have a lot of topics that are really cool that just I can do as a studio version sitting here and kind of cover. So uh, let's go back to questions here. Um, See if I missed anything on the Facebook, I mean on the uh, YouTube. Um, 
again, if you have any questions, you can shout them out now. Even if it's about something else, it doesn't have to be about backing stuff up. It just happened to be, like I said, after posting that picture, I was just being silly about uh, doing a backup of my backup's backup. And it just got a lot of response. And, and I really like that. I enjoy people who, you know, were going, you know, understanding, going, yes, thank you for reminding me. Or, you know, I just did that. It's cool to... Besides just people backing their stuff up, there's a few people that talk to me and, that are just as anal as I am, and it's kind of it's kind of nice to see that other people are that that caring about their their uh, uh, data, because um, a lot of people, like I said, just don't really seem to make the effort. Again, feel free to hit me up questions. I'm going to go back to the other one and see if I can see any questions. Like again, we have um, oh uh, DJ Cadillac's in here tonight. What's going on? Thank you for tuning in. Um, there's quite a few DJs. See, this is the thing that I, I maybe I think I would like to talk to some DJs in, in Vegas and find out how much people carry because that's that's becoming a new thing too. Is how many songs you carry. I don't carry a lot. I DJ out three to four nights a week with less than half a terabyte of music, and people are like, "What? How could that be?" Because I have exactly what I need every time I go out. I rarely don't have what people ask for because I just don't have a bunch of junk in there. So if it got inside the top 40 at any time or was a hit, like a line dance was a hit or, or a hit that you know became famous because of a video, I download it. But all the other stuff that you would get from certain download services that just dump music in your lap, I don't mess with that. So I don't have a lot of crap in mind. But I know guys that go out with uh, 5 and 10 and more than 10 terabytes of songs. And I, I kind of look at... What I would like to ask, what is your backup process for that many songs? Now, I know guys that run, I can't remember what they're called, where they'll run three sets uh, of drives to where it's a backup. This one backs up this one. This one backs up this one. And, and it continually works like that. I can't remember what those are called, um, which is great. But you're still carrying a lot with you. And I'm just kind of curious about uh, someone who does have a large file uh, database um, how how do you function with that when it comes to to copies and backups? Because that takes a while. Like I said, for mine, it doesn't take much time at all. And like I said, I constantly every single week download new music. I'm downloading new versions. Like right now, I'm I've been doing it a lot lately. To where uh, in in the world that I DJ, most of the people are in their 20s. So a 25 year old in 2009 was 15. So you have to think about that. So 2009 are throwbacks. To some of these people, so I've been going and buying, uh, getting uh, uh, re-drums of songs from like 2009, 10, 11, and 12, stuff like that, so that I can have like like one of the ones I got recently was a re-drum of "Party in the USA," and I got a re-drum of "Nelly Must Be the Money," and what was the other one? Um, another one from that era. So I'm I'm not only just getting new songs, but I'm getting different things from the past to bring in too, but I still don't do the giant file dump stuff that everybody else does because I just don't feel it's efficient. I don't feel you're getting your money's worth by getting, you know, a hundred songs every week dumped in your lap and there's probably two or three of them you're going to play and the rest you aren't. They're just there taking up stuff. Um, uh, Dave Fernandez says it takes a day and a half for him to back his up. Um, I would downsize... <laughs> I, especially with today, like I said, if you use virtual or Serato, there are streaming services, and I am not one. Listen here, before you start throwing stuff at me, I'm not one that tells you that streaming is what you should go to. Streaming, to me, is a backup. Don't ever go, well, I have streaming services, I'll just go DJ. Because think about this on the smallest level of this. If you have a version of a song that you're streaming that you absolutely love, and then all of a sudden the people who own the rights to that song, whether it be a record label, producer, whoever, all of a sudden says, I don't want that streaming service to have the rights to this. They pull the rights. The streaming service has to drop that song, and now you no longer have that song because you were only streaming it instead of downloading it. So I look at it as my download is my download, but I still use streaming when I need to. And just like the other day, I don't remember what I was playing. It was something, it might have been, like I said, I was grabbing some older stuff, and I can't remember what it was, and I said, you know, because, again, with the people that I DJ with the 20s, you can't play three-minute songs. They will get bored to death, so pretty much everything I spin is quick mixes that are like a minute, minute and a half. And I said, well, I'm going to see if I can go find a quick mix of this song. Went on to the streaming thing, found a quick mix, played it, and then the next week, every Thursday when I go get new music, 
I go onto my history, look at all the songs that I streamed, and go, oh, I like this version. So I go and get that instead of keep streaming it so that I have it no matter what. Um, and I also found a way, don't tell anybody this because people will shoot me, I found a way to record uh, DRM songs <laughs> from streaming services. So don't tell anybody that. Um, I guess I just told everybody that. But if, like I said, if you can't find it, I'm person, I'll go download it for the services that I pay for. Again, business write-offs for all these services that I pay for, uh, you know, uh, promo only, all these different things like that. But like I said, I go back into the uh, history, see what I've streamed from the previous week, and go grab a copy. And that's kind of the way it worked then. So I, I don't have a lot, even though I'm still constantly grabbing stuff. So I'm kind of curious. We have someone there. So they have 2.5 terabytes uh, of stuff. And again, Dave talks about its music and videos Mine are almost all videos. Uh, I would say probably half and half because I still have a lot of older ones that are still MP3s. Um, but when I download now, when I go to the services, I look for the video first. If there's a video out for the song, I download the video. So that's included in that. I'm not talking just audio. That's everything I DJ, and I DJ videos quite often. Um, uh, I see different people here. Someone clones every couple of months, which is good. Like I said, that's my goal is to do once a month now. Um, I hope that I can. It's not that, like I said, it's not that terribly difficult just to plug something in and, and let it go. Um, I think I did all of these in an afternoon one day, uh, including taking this one and putting it onto the studio computer too because I'm also switching that out. And this isn't an SSD. Uh, actually, none of these are SSDs. And If I had an SSD, because I run full SSDs in the studio computer and full SSDs in the DJ computer, if I were to go out and purchase an SSD for my backup, it would be a lot faster, which I probably should do, and that probably would make me happy <laughs> to really go through stuff faster than this. But right now, these are my, my backups that I'm using. And like I said, um, for those who maybe missed it earlier, this is my backup backup, which is just... A direct backup of everything. This is one that I back up and then keep offsite at a friend's house, another DJ friend. I give it to him. He keeps it. So if, like I said, I ever, um, the house caught on fire, I got robbed or something, I have stuff offsite. And then this one is the clone to where I basically took a full clone image of both my C and D drives on the DJ computer. And I have a separate one in the studio computer that I do that with also. So um, I got a little buzz in my ear tonight. My headphone thing, maybe. I don't know. Anyways, so looking at the chat here, I still have a few more minutes. I'm not going to go the full hour tonight. Let's see who's over here still. Um, if you have any questions. Uh, people talking about how they've had laptops die on them. Again, these things happen, so you always have to think about it. it is, you know, whether you're a construction worker, you got to think about your truck. Or your, your your tools or whatever whatever your job is that thing that you do your job with um, has to be ready to go and that's again the purpose of all this tonight is is not to tell you anything you don't already know because trust me I don't care if you're an old person like me <laughs> or a young person you have enough digital experience to where you're able to back stuff up and you know about it it's not something new it's not something that's just come out it's it's all a part of stuff that's uh, our normal lives and uh, I just want to encourage you for reasons of other people if you don't believe me just sit in the chat and let people in the chat tell you horror stories of stuff being stolen dropped broken, died, whatever, and because you do the backups, you, it's not a horror story. It's only some extra labor. And there's a big difference between uh, something going bad and being just the worst. Because I had a friend of mine, no joke, who I seriously thought was had his stuff together. Um, really smart guy, great DJ business, really technical guy. I'm driving to a gig, and he calls me. He goes, hey, can I have your hard drive, your backup? I'm like, what do you need my backup for? Are you just looking for songs? He's like, no, my computer died. And I'm like, what, you don't have a backup? And he's like, well, I do, but it's on my, my home system. And uh, I guess he had it as part of a, um, I'm not sure, I forget what that's called now, where you have it in your, um, uh, 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 your, your, your intranet of your house, and that's all where he had it. He didn't have a drive that he could just pick up, plug in, and go. And it was like, blew my mind that he didn't because I, ex I would expect him to be a person who's doing 10 times more than I do when it comes to backing up. I, I just was like, what? So you if you don't believe the importance of this, just talk to a couple DJs, ask about horror stories, talk about it in the chat. Um, it's important. It's really, really, really important. Um, 
Uh, someone on Facebook just said, I know a DJ that has no backup at all. I've warned him, and he won't listen. I- I'm the type of person that feel free to let them crash and burn on their own, and and, and maybe at that point, if you want to help out, help out. You know, It's always good to add a little extra uh, kindness to the world, because I, I would. I, I would help out, but I would still stand there going, um, you wouldn't need me here if you would have done this yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and they're usually gonna just going to shake their head, and I'm like, you really wouldn't even need me here, you know? So that way, always help people out, like I said, because I, I believe that, that kindness repays in kindness, you know, however you want to word that, whether it's karma, uh, uh, you, you reap what you sow, whatever your choice of words is, I firmly believe in that. Um, so I, help people out, encourage them. Um, let me see who else here in the chat here. Uh, for a lot of the DJs who do mobile gigs, uh, um, uh, Scott was talking about it in, in, on fa- on YouTube, that a lot of the guys who do mobile gigs obviously have multiple laptops with them. And that's pretty norm for the mobile gigs. But for guys like me who do the clubs and the bars, uh, you're walking in with one computer. Uh, be- usually because there's another DJ around that can take over something craps out. I keep a tablet in there uh, that I can go off of that if something had to be reboot. Um, all I, I have a, a, a connection, uh, eighth inch connection to the mixer. So all I would have to do is pop that in, start an app playing, or if I wanted to, I could take one of the apps that does the mixing and I could mix on it or just put a mix in while I reboot the whole system and get everything back up if I had to reboot or it would get me through the night just in case crap. Because again, I don't want to lose a paycheck for something that I can fix. So again, for a lot of the, the, the mobile guys, like, I mean, the, the, club and 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 bar guys like myself uh we usually don't take an extra one with us um but for the mobile guys that's that's a norm and and it's good um obviously you're you're getting paid more too so if something craps out where you're at that's someone's most important day uh for me if it craps out worst case scenario the manager goes over and kicks on the jukebox or something stupid like that i don't know but like i said i always make the joke that if 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 my computer died right now there'd be five guys standing right there ready to jump in and that's just the way it is with the thing in our business that that people just immediately was like i'll take that right now you know um so there's always those options of that. Uh, let's see who else is it in the chat here. Um, uh, Dave in there is talking about getting an SSD for his uh, his 2012 Mac. I can tell you from the studio computer. I don't know if you watched the other show in the studio computer. I have an old studio, an old tower here that uh, it's about 11 years old. It's an i3, um, but back when I bought it, that was fast. Okay. And I was going, oh, I'm going to have to get a new studio computer. It's old. It's getting slow. Um, Had a problem with the hard drive. uh, Put a new hard drive in, copied everything over. And I'm like, wow, this is much faster. You know, obviously you put a new, do things cleanly. It's going to be faster. And a friend of mine's like, why don't you just put a a solid state in there? And I'm like, well, I just don't have that much money. And he's like, they're not that much now. And that's when I went and looked and found that $130 uh, Samsung Evo. And I put it in there. And for 130, I put that in. I put some more RAM in there, so I up my, doubled my RAM, and I bought because, like I said, it was an old i3 tower. It did not have USB 3 ports, so I bought a USB 3 uh, uh, card to go in, in in the the motherboard. So I put a little bit more than 200 dollars into this 11 year old computer by putting the solid state drive in and stuff, and it is like a new computer. So we're talking something that's 11 years old that from the time I press the on button, now again, my DJ laptop's faster than this, but from the time I press the on button to the time I could take the mouse and open a program, I timed it, is 23 seconds. So for a computer that's that old, throwing a solid state drive in, some RAM, and the USB uh, 3.0 uh, card, to being able to pop that button and 23 seconds later start clicking and moving stuff that's amazing. So if with the prices of the solid state drives, if you want to do an update, I highly recommend it. Your mind will be blown by how much faster it is. Um, it's even copying stuff back and forth to different things. It just blows my mind how fast you just thrown files here and there now. 
So if you are looking to upgrade, uh, there's a lot out there that are good price. Do a little research. Find out what's best for you. I'm a fan of the Samsung Evos. I think they're fast. They're good. But keep in mind that th there's a whole thing about rewriting with them that uh, you don't get as much many years. We could basically say it is a year, but it's the amount of times that you're rewriting um, out of them. Uh, so it's good to have the backups. But still, for dropping, you know, uh, if you were to drop a terabyte in there, Dave, um, we're talking, like I said, anywhere from, uh, like I said, I paid 90 for this one. It's the 860 off Amazon. I paid 90 for it. And 90 to 130. And I promise you, your computer, because the numbers, from what I understand, that it will make a computer about 40% faster. So I, I, I know, like I said, just from, from my experience with both this and the fact now that I have two solid states in there, both that, that, uh, uh, that M.2 style and the regular one, that thing is just freaking just nothing hesitates. Um, for those who know virtual, you do the right click and recurse to where it rescans everything. And before, I would watch it go scanning up through all the songs like that. And now with the two SSDs, I do that scan. It's like, boop, done. So it is scanned through every one of my files like in literally five seconds or less. And it just it's crazy. So but yeah, Amazon is where I got both of mine at. Um so yeah. Uh yeah, that was the other thing. Clean, yeah, he's talking about cleaning the laptop. Absolutely. When I had that thing apart, I vacuumed, uh, because I what I have is and I did a, a video a while back on Disc Jockey News about cleaning your DJ equipment. And if you go to like an auto parts store or Walmart, they have adapters for uh, shop vacs that, that taper it down with brushes and stuff, and they're for detailing cars, really small things like that. And you can take that and, and use that to clean the computer out, and it will help with heat dissipation and all kinds of stuff like that. So it's important to keep it clean. Like I said, for me, I'm out three or four times a week. Uh, you're out in the wild with a computer. It, it gets a lot more gunky than, than you think it does. Um, well, I always think it's funny for me when I'll have my, my controller out and then I'll I'll bring it in the studio where it's under like normal lights as opposed to the dark lights in the club or the or the or the or the bar that I'm at, and then bring it in the studio in the normal lights, and you'll just see just dirt and dust and fingerprints, and I'm like, ooh, I touched that, <laughs> but it is what it is. Um, checking up here, uh, see what we have here. Yeah, it, the the thumb drives and different things like that. Like some of the some of the new uh, um, what do you call that? New uh, controllers and stuff are taking the uh, the thumb drives. Uh, I do know that there's some more coming out between now and Nam uh, that will be taking SSDs that you wouldn't believe that are going to take SSDs and be standalones. Um, I got Previ on two of them that I'm like, I wonder how people are going to like that being a standalone capability. So it's kind of interesting how that's all going that way. But like I said, with, with the SSD and how much it's done for, for things and like even our phones and how fast it makes them, um, I can tell you that if you don't have an SSD in yours and you want a, an easy business write-off that you will be thankful for, it's worth spending the money on the SSD. It, you just, it will blow your mind the difference it makes. Um, again, I've, I've been in the computers my whole life, and I'm old. My, my first computer I ever owned, and this is going to tell you how old I am, was a Commodore VIC-20 that I still have over in the other side of the basement in the box. Uh, so it is just still even that little bit of going from the hard drive to the SSD, what a big difference that makes. And for the price, like I said, studio computer, a little over $200, and it's like I have a brand new computer. It's freaking, it just blows my mind because I'm running editing videos on here. And one of my toughest things on this was to be running Adobe uh uh, for the vi their video editor and Adobe uh, Photoshop at the same time, editing stills that go over there. And before, the two of them working together were really, uh, they, they weighed a lot in the system. It was really tough. But now, literally, I leave them both, because I run dual screens here, and I leave them both open and just jump back and forth, and it doesn't even hesitate. And that's what I kind of love. I don't want to be held up, especially if I'm making money. The faster I can do a job, the more I make per hour, you know, doing the job. But I've made a lot of air quotes tonight. I'm sorry about that. Um... I think I'm going to shut it down. Now, if we have any other questions, feel free to hit me up. Um, uh, uh, Rez, if you have any of those for sale, Rez said that they accidentally sent him 10 drives. He had ordered one SSD, and he sent him 10. Uh, give me a good price because I'm always looking because I have another computer that's actually hooked up to my old TV. I have an old, old flat-screen TV that's not a smart TV, and I have an old laptop hooked up to that. I'd like to throw an SSD in that. I still may. Again, I can. Again, they're write-offs, so I may do that. I may still look for the 
the um, the RAM for that. My studio computer is still uh, uh, it's I'm thinking about going to Windows 10 on it. So these are all expenses that I'm, I'm thinking about writing off this year. I did some software this year also, some equipment. I'm always buying new cords. Um, like I said, if you follow on my Instagram, uh, Snapchat, or Facebook story mode, I just put a picture up of something else I just recently spent money on and did. Um, everybody else has to wait for tomorrow to see the pictures, and the video will be out next week. Um, but that's about it. If we don't have any more questions in there, uh, I'm going to check the other side to see if there's any um, stuff for the Facebook people. Thank you, Joe, for hanging in, all you guys on Facebook for hanging in there. Um, it was awesome. Um, continue to check out some of the videos that, that I've done in the past on Disc Jockey News because I've covered a lot of stuff. I covered a, 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 my wish list last week on last month's music and mixing. I have a whole series of virtual DJ stuff. If you're a virtual user, uh, these little tips and tricks that I do in there. My other show, The Rewind Report, covers gear, and that's what the one next week will cover some gear. And last week I covered the little um, – uh, is it still here? Yeah. Um, that I purchased this at – uh, the DJ Expo this year, and it's the Starlight by Hercules, the little mini controller. And I explained in there why I chose this and what I use it for. And and a lot of people are like that's so cool. And I've had people who I I would expect to like have bunches of these going. I never thought of getting one of those for that reason. Um, but check out the video. Like I said, uh, it's it's all on Disc Jockey News, everything there, plus all the other shows that we have. Check out the fact that we're going to be at the Photo Booth Expo in February in Las Vegas. And some of the stuff we're going to be teaching, if you have a chance to do that, uh, please do. If you have any questions, uh, I, topic ideas for future shows or anything, do not hesitate to drop me a message. I am, Like I said, I'm on all of the social media, so whatever is the one you prefer, send me a message. I'm there. Um, I can you know, answer questions or, or even just um, uh, turn it into a topic in the future because I would probably say 90% of all my shows come from topics that people go, hey, what about this? And I turn it into a show. So until next time, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. You guys are awesome. I will not be back on a live show until January. Uh, like I said, I do have my recording shows coming next week with the Rewind Report and the uh, VDJ How To that's coming before the end of the year. But I will not be live again. At least I don't think I will until next year. So I want to say everyone have an awesome holiday, all the different holidays that you celebrate. Um, uh, enjoy yourselves, relax, don't let them stress you out because this is a bad time of year for a lot of people. Take a deep breath, be nice to yourself, just smile the best you can because tomorrow is another day and that's all you can do. And I thank you guys for tuning in and until next time, take care. God bless.